about to leave on my mission. It's really mm. frustrating. So like I have a friend, he put in his papers the same day I did. He got his call. He's going to Brazil. And then I just didn't get mine. And then I got friends and they got called to like Mexico. This is the plot of the Book of Mormon. All your friends got assigned like fucking Hungary and Brazil. Yeah, and you yeah, got assigned yeah. fucking Michigan. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Is this Lyle? Yeah, who is this? This is Elder Smith. Elder Smith. That's how what's I'm up, go. man? What's up, Elder Smith? Oh my Smith? gosh, this is crazy. Well, um, I'm about to leave on my mission. Yeah, man, you sent me a text. You said, I'm a Mormon, I'm 18 years old, I'm about to leave on a mission for two yeah, years. It said you're about to leave for two yeah. years. Yes, that's how long you go out for. Um, so uh, for those who don't know, I guess the mission is like, well, everything I know about about Mormonism, there's the Book of Mormon, the South Park play. Uh, I went to Utah. I <laughs> yeah, did a show there, and everyone there was Mormon, and people had really Mormon, lots of Mormon stories to talk yes, about. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, tell me, tell well, me, tell me about I this am mission. From Utah. Well, it's kind of a, I don't know, will you ever run into missionaries before? Like, I guess if you've seen the Book of Mormon play, like, we're the guys that knock on the doors and want to talk about the Book of Mormon and stuff, right? Yeah. But, I don't know, it's just, it's fun. So I'm from Utah, and so all my friends are Mormon. It's kind of different. There's like a joke where there's like a... Mormon, and then there's like Utah Mormons because everybody here is Mormon. And so, well, we actually don't go by Mormon. We go by um, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints now. Yeah. Because yeah. people call us Mormons. And like, there's a whole, this whole debate, I guess, where um, people say, oh, they're not Christian or whatever. And so recently, the like leadership in our church, they decided to um, change that because. I mean, when it comes down to it, like, we're centered on Christ, right? So it's kind of, but see, people still call us Mormons, so I kind of, I don't know if you knew that or not, but I just wanted to market it. It's like, oh, now, I'm a Mormon. And, what is, what is, the real quick, what's the difference between regular Mormon and Utah Mormon? So, like, I don't know. So, like, um, like, living in Utah, right? Every, like, I mean, not everybody's a Mormon, but, like, actually, most of my friends in high school and growing up none of us or like no, not none of us but like most of my closest friends are actually they were mormon and they they've now left the church or actually one of my closest friends is a mormon at all but like a utah mormon so like when you're like say you're leaving in like texas so like everybody in your school like this mormon is going to be in your ward right so a ward is like where you um go to church right and you like sit down and chat it's like a uh you. oh crap i'm trying to think of what the christian equivalent is called i know i damn i know this word what's that word it's the christian uh a sac well we call it a sacrament meeting where the war the like, word like what's, mass, oh, oh, God. mass right not mass there's, what's there's the this is gonna this is gonna kill me not a congregation I went to one of these before. I went to one of these. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a uh, it's a thing where like you where it's it's not a call, not a parish. It's the thing where like all the all the like uh, um all the the Christian people they all get together and they live in a the same place. It's not a commune. Huh. Seminary, the seminary. Well, yes, talking. the seminary. Oh, the seminary? So, thank you. Well, do you know what's funny? Thank we you. Chop Scotto. In the chat, the seminary. Yes, yeah, so you guys have a seminary thing. No, so what seminary is for, um, I guess, Mormons. So what seminary is, and I live in Utah, right? So I guess this is an example of Utah Mormons. So it's kind of bad. Uh, so going to high school, lots of high schools here, we have what's called a seminary building. And it's like a, basically it's like a church, but there's no like chapel with pews and stuff. It's just classrooms. And then like kids in high school you go to the seminary class like it's like one of our like actual periods in school but um so we go to the seminary class and we just like talk with the teacher and you get like you can graduate from seminary it's like different from high school but you get like a different like diploma and things but um 
like I guess other people have seminary. I don't even know exactly what the other seminaries are, but okay, like, but in but, so that's like a thing in Utah. Like you'll do that in high school, and mm-hmm. then but like kids that aren't from Utah, like that doesn't exist. Like you don't like go to like Texas. You don't, there's no church attached to the high school. It's like kind of like a church, but it's not really. But because like you just go in your regular clothes and you go every other day, right? But um, yes, yeah, like they so kids from other states that don't they don't grow up here. They go to like early morning seminary, and so they have okay. to get up at like five, and they have to drive so, farther. Like they usually so so El, so like, so they so have Elder to Smith. Like work for it. Um, yes. dude, where are you going on this mission to? I'm going to Michigan actually, and I'm going. I'm speaking Spanish. I don't even know if there's anyone who speaks <laughs> Spanish in Michigan. You're going to Mich. You're going to Michigan. It. Yes. They've, it's dude, they, they've so got, like hold on, hold on. Thing. There's definitely already a ton of Mormons in Michigan. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that's got to be a pretty I mean, easy least, sell over there. I mean, well, the point of being a missionary is you go and you teach people that aren't. I mean, it's kind of both. Like, you go and you work in the church and, like, you, so we become members. And so, like, there's people that join the church and they get baptized and everything. And then they end up going inactive. So actually a big part of a missionary's job is to go and teach the people that are have gone inactive and like get them coming back to church and like things you're like the that, you know, you're the and, like, get them back in the church. You're the you're the guy that comes in when people uh, leave Jesus in their shopping cart, but don't check out. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's actually said. I'm going to use that on my mission. I'll write that in my journal. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lyle. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so, so, that, so, Elder Smith, also, like, the point is, yeah. how are I want to know this. And aside from all this stuff and, and the explanations and everything, you, person, what's mm-hmm. your, what's, can I, can yeah. I call you your, what, your first name? What's, you don't have to tell me if you want to. Well, it's funny because my last name is Smith, so I'm not like worried, but my first name is, is like, it Joseph? Weird. So, my name is, no, it's not. What, what's funny, my brother was almost named Joseph. I actually know a kid named Joseph Smith because my dad's grandpa was Joseph and he wanted a name after that, but my mom wouldn't let him. <laughs> but his name is Peter, actually. So, But my name is Creighton. Creighton. So, Creighton. Yeah. Like, tell me, mm-hmm. somebody in the chat just asked me uh, to ask you about soaking, which I'm not going to do. Don't even react to the fact that I said that. <laughs> I'm going to do it later, well, but I have other things I want to ask you about first. You personally, Creighton, <laughs> do you, yeah. how are, like, dude, how are you feeling about going to, going to Michigan? Like, tell me, tell me your internal processing. Are you excited? Like, like are you nervous? To- do you, like, how are you feeling about the whole thing? Well, dude, like, honestly, it's really gone, like, pretty back and forth. Because, like, obviously, like, I don't know, so, like, when you when you go on your mission, like I'm, I just graduated high school and I had this summer and now I'm going right. So like, it's like whereas people will like, you get in with college or get done with high school and you're like, oh, let me apply for college, let me do this that. Like, a lot of us end up going on missions. So it's been like I'm really looking forward to it actually because um, so like, it takes like two weeks. Like, so you go through this process and you send your like application basically you like apply for a mission right it's called mission application and you put it in and then like two weeks later they should give you your call but so i put mine in in like february and i have had some like a history with like um mental health and like depression anxiety and so they'll like they saw that and they're like oh we want to talk to you more and so i had to go through this whole process of talking with people and like I had to do some interviews and but I got there so like now I've been waiting since like February and so I was like out of my friends like I have a lot of Mormon friends I was the like first one to put in my papers right and then all my friends got their calls and I didn't get mine and I didn't get mine it was really like a test of faith like it was really Mm. frustrating so like I have a friend, I, he's like my best friend, his name's Caleb, He's and he put in his papers the same day I did. Two weeks later, actually one week later even, which is like unheard of, he got his call, he's going to Brazil, and then I just didn't get mine, 
and then I got friends, and they got called to like Mexico. I have a friend that got called to Hungary. <laughs> Dude, I have a friend that got called to Australia. And a friend Dude, that got this to is Peru. this is this is the plot of the Book of Mormon. Is there's that this is the plot what? of the Book of Mormon. This is the plot of the Book of Mormon. Oh, is is really? like there's that so, there's that song where um where everybody is like getting assigned where they're gonna go. And yeah, that's literally it. And they get assigned. Look, they get assigned. Song, uh, right? uh, uh, they get assigned. You know what's supposed to be the worst place. And like, all, and and all your friends got assigned, like fucking Hungary and Brazil and on Mexico. All these cool. Yeah, and you yeah, got assigned yeah. fucking Michigan. I know. Well, but you know what's funny is like, I like I kind of like everybody wants to go foreign, right? Like everybody wants to do that. And so, at first, I was kind of like, oh, Michigan. They keep your call, and you're like, wow. And so at first, you're kind of disappointed. But you know what? I um, really, like, looked into it, and I was like, so there's, like, when you think of Michigan, you think of, like, Detroit, right? And, like, all this, like, this terrible just city and stuff. I don't know. I've yeah. never been to Detroit. Are you going to Detroit my, for, for, are you going to? No. Now, I don't know if there's a lot of fucking, I don't know if there's a lot of uh, Mormons in Detroit. I don't know either, man. Probably. There's probably more there. If there was a though. sequel so, to Book of Mormon instead of Africa, they would get sent to Detroit. <laughs> to Detroit, that would be super funny. Well, um, so you get, so there's like Detroit and Michigan, right? And so like imagine that there's like a little cookie cutter circle. So there's like different missions. So like, like in Texas, there's probably like eight different missions. There's a Dallas, there's a Houston, there's a, so mine is actually called, I don't know if it's like bad. To, I mean, you know what? People should know who I am because then I can teach them about Christ. So if you ever want to, I'm in the, um, so my mission is called the Lansing Mission, Lansing, Michigan. Uh, dude, I've been, I've so, been to Lansing, Michigan. Oh, really? Yeah, I have. I, I, pl- look, I played in a band there funny. for a day. Yeah. You played in a band? Yeah. It's a, lo- it's a long what story. Did you play? But I played the what, tambourine. You played instrument? Yeah, I played the tambourine. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, sick. Dude, yeah, I hope I hope that I play guitar. I hope they let me take my guitar out my mission. I think I have to mail it. But you know what? So my thing in my life that I really love doing is I just love the outdoors, right? So I love, like, like fishing is, like, really what I'm into. Like, I just love fishing. And I love, like, I hunted, love hiking and backpacking. And what's cool is that, like, that's a huge part of the culture in Michigan, right? Like, I mean, a part of the Midwestern culture... And so, like, I kind of learned to understand that. I mean, I already knew it, but, like, I don't know, everybody has a charm of, like, going to Germany. Like, I took three years of German in school, and so I was like, oh, maybe they'll send me to Germany. Because you put that on your application, I've had that experience. And so you think that you're going to go there. Right. But then I get called Spanish-speaking to freaking Lansing, Michigan, right? Do you speak Spanish? I, I don't speak Spanish. What's funny is my friends, they all did, um, if I would have gone to public school, my dad sent me to private school, which freaking was kind of interesting. But if I would have gone to the public school that I was supposed to, that was like in my area, it was Spanish immersion. So like <laughs> all my friends speak Spanish because they went there and I don't speak Spanish at all. I don't wow. speak German for that matter either. But I have a friend that he, um, he went to that school and like he got called to Mexico and like uh. so, like it, they do take that into account. Like, there's a test or stuff you can take. I didn't do that for German, but so whatever. so um, so you're are you are you like specifically like trying to to spread uh uh the the word of the Lord to uh like Spanish speaking people yeah, and communities so, and stuff. I mean, so like most missionaries in the United States are obviously like going to speak English because that's what. But like, I mean, there's lots of sp- Spanish speaking people in the country. And so like, I, one of the, like, one of the things the church focuses on is that like teaching the, um, teaching the gospel in their native language, even if they're from the United States, but like lots of people have Spanish, their first language speaking, like teaching them in their first language can probably like, it comes uh, off a lot more meaningful. And so even though it's like, um, in the United States, like they still do that, but, um, like, yeah, you're supposed to, like, teach the gospel. But, like, honestly, like, for me, 
like a lot of missionaries they come back and they go and everything and like the big thing that they say is like oh i got i had this many baptisms and like oh i baptized like people from like like these crazy places because they just kind of like just couldn't have so many converts they're like oh i baptized 30 people on my mission like honestly like personally i don't really care about that because what i think is cool like I don't, like, personally, I just want, like, people to be happy, and I want to connect with people. Like, I don't care if you get baptized. I don't care if you hate the church or what. I just want to connect with the people that, like, aren't, like, happy, you know? And, like, be able to, like, in my life, this is what has, like, brought brought joy to me. And so I want to be able to, like, hey, look, if you're not doing well, let me offer this to you and say, like, let me offer you the scriptures. Let me offer you Christ, you know, and like you can pray and learn about that. And um, in my life, it's really been comforting. And it's it's like all my family as well and lots of my friends. Like, I mean, if you, if you don't want to hear it, sorry, my alarm's going off. If you don't want to hear it, then that's okay. But if if I can help you be happy and improve your life, that's what I just want to do, you know? So I think do that's you- kind of the... Do you do Sorry, you feel uh, do you do you feel very happy as as a person right now? You know what? Yeah, I do. I think Good. well so like I said, I have struggled with like mental health in the past. I right, think yeah, it's just like a hereditary that. thing. Yeah. And I've just and I but you know, I've really learned to deal with that and um if I'm a better person in the as a growing up as I I, I hate like saying Mormon all the time, but like that's what we are, like Growing up Mormon, um, there's a thing that when you're 14, you can get what's called your patriarchal blessing. And um, it's basically a blessing that um, this patriarch, so like an older guy, is like like every like ward has one that they're assigned to. He gives you a blessing and it's like supposed to be an outlook on like your life. And like it gives you blessings and shows you strengths that you might have or that you do have. And, like, sometimes it says, like, really weird specific things, like, um, like, it doesn't, like, guarantee that, like, oh, you're going on a mission, it'll be, like, you'll be granted the opportunity for missionary work. It just says all these things. But the one thing that my, this is just, like, part of my testimony as well, one thing that my blessing said, you're, technically you're not, like, supposed to, like, share what they say. It's, like, supposed oh, to be private. Like, but is like, it, I it's think like a fortune a, cookie where if you read it, it doesn't come true? Oh. Uh, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> you know, God okay. has works in mysterious ways, but, um, uh, sorry. What was I? Saying? Oh, so in what's my, your, blessing, what's your, that, what's your blessing that you're not allowed to tell us? Uh, it's the, well, the whole patriarchal blessing. You're just not supposed to like say, but I, I'm fine. It's fine sharing this. Cause it's, I don't know. It's part of the testimony, I guess. But, um, one of the things that said in my blessing, this is even before, so I'm 18 now. I think I got it when I was like 15, and this was before I ever had problems. It's like, you're yeah. going to go through um, problems with like sadness and like um, just hard times. And it said, but what you're going to do is you're going to come out and you're going to turn those around and you're going to use that to help other people. Mm. And so I think that's a really cool calling to me, like person. Like, that's a cool, like, I mean, that is kind of a reference to, like, being a missionary, but, like, honestly, like, I think it's just, like, I want to use my skills and my, like, experience to, like, help people around that if I can. I don't know. I'm a young yeah. guy. And yeah. People no, scary, dude, people but, are, like, but, but that's a good, that's you know? a cool, that's a good yeah, goal. Yeah, cool. That's a good goal. And it's, and I, 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 I'm bad. thinking about that. I think when you're, when you're in a position where you, you're really uh, depressed and, feel like shit like that that really is one of like the best things you can do is go and try to get out of your own fucking head and and uh you know help someone else and it and it, and and that you can interpret that in any way shape or form that you wish whether you know i don't know exactly what you do on a mission i don't know if um you know you you give people food or just, <laughs> I, I don't know if there's cupcakes involved. I mean, but, sometimes maybe there probably is. But uh, I that. think that I just you know that as a general goal, I think is is cool, man. Yeah, I think like honestly, it's not about like just missions. It's like that's a very smart or not like I mean maybe yeah, smart I guess. But like that's just the way like you should go around living. Like 
I don't know. Well, it's kind of one thing that's kind of sad in the church is like there's a lot, a lot of these old people, you know, and they like pressure all these younger people and like, oh, you need to go on a mission. And like a lot of like younger people in the church, they feel like, oh, my gosh, I need to go on a mission. But I don't feel like it's for me. I don't feel right. Well, the and cool thing about really sad. your mission. But, um, oh, yeah. Go, go on. Go on. Yeah, you, you go. I was going to say I was going to say something really fucking stupid, which I'll say later. But. <laughs> Um, okay 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 so i mean i mean all right so you're excited about this because you, you sent me this text and when yeah. i read it i was when you sent me this text and when i read it i was like it kind of seems like this guy is is nervous for this or having kind of well, a, yeah, a, a varying feelings about it yeah what are you nervous about i was by the like, way the thing i was gonna say is that the cool thing about your mission is that it it there's automatopoeia it's the michigan mission it's a tongue twister. I know. That, I, I didn't think about that. Michigan mission, missionary in the mission in Michigan. Okay. Anyway, okay. That's, I'm but, glad um, we talked about that. Like th- <laughs> things that I'm like scared about. So like when you're on a mission, there's like a lot of rules that you have to follow, right? I mean, you have to dress up nice every day. You have to um, wear your name tag. You can't. There's just lots of like lots of rules and like like so one of the rules. I don't know. It's kind of different for every mission, but um. Like, one of the rules a lot of the time is that you, like, can't even... Like, so there's sister missionaries, too, right? And so there's girls that go on missions. And, like, you can't even hug the sister missionaries. <laughs> because, mm. like, you just have to, like... I don't know, you have to be asked, I guess. But, like, there's even stuff like that. But, like, the thing that, like, worries me about my mission is, like, um... I am a really, like... I, I like to think that I'm, a like, a kind of a free spirit. And I like doing my own thing when I want to do it, like... I'll sit at home, watch YouTube all day, or I'll go on a drive, or I like getting obsessed with catching a certain fish and, like, spending a week doing that, you know? Like, whereas in going on a mission, like, it's very focused, and, like, you have to do very specific things. And But honestly, like, there's ways around that. Like, you, I mean, like, wherever you are in life, you can, like, find joy. And so I think that's kind of alleviated a bit of that stress. So I mean, that's kind of, like the big thing like obviously like i don't want to have like my um anxiety or depression flare up i think that i'm to the point where if i didn't feel comfortable on coping and like dealing with that that i wouldn't even decide to go on a mission because like really like i was saying how um lots of people feel pressured and they do go and like lots of people come back because like they're just like it's not for everybody and i think that's well totally you're people, this is to understand well i mean Broadly, you're 18 mm-hmm. years old. You're 18 yeah. years old, and you know a lot of people at 18 years old, whether it's a mission or college or yeah. going on a, a work exchange or you know, there's a lot. There's many, many, many different options for the thing at 18 where you go. I'm gonna exercise some independence. I'm gonna challenge yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna leave my hometown. Um, and, you know, try and do new stuff. Everyone should do that. Everyone should, should, should do it. It's not going to be for everyone. Yeah, for totally, sure. You're hundred percent right. Totally. It's not going to be for everyone. That's why, you know, a lot of people come back, but you know, you're describing yourself as a, as a free spirit. You seem like a smart dude. You should go and see the world. Um, yeah. you know, you should go and, and I try know, and put yourself that... out there and then try and follow yeah, yeah, yeah. this, this goal that you have uh, of, of uh, you know, because that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways that people cope with being a uh, uh, fucking uh, sad and uh, mm-hmm. get, getting out there and exerting f- force upon the universe in some yeah, yeah, way yeah. so that you're not just uh Sitting watching YouTube, the fish catching thing you talked about sounded fun, but you know, trying to trying to do something with your life is a good thing. So I'm 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 glad you're trying. Um, yeah, thanks, man. By the by the way, just you know, look if you're do don't uh, don't open with do you, how do, how does it how does it work? Like let's all right, let's say I'm a Spanish guy. And you're trying to okay. spread your word of God. What does that? What does that look like? Even so, 
Well, I mean, I haven't done the MTC yet. All I know is like from people that have. So the MTC is like, so for a month, I'm going to go to the MTC, which stands for the Missionary Training Center. And so they'll teach you how to be a missionary and like I'll, I'll learn Spanish there. Actually, the MTC is like considered the number one place in the country to learn languages. Like they have the most success rate. But anyway, like there's like the way like there's certain like ways that you approach people and you're supposed to say, Hey, how are you doing? Can, uh, do you have a quick minute that I can share a message about Jesus Christ or the Book of Mormon? And stuff, oh, right? you're gonna, you're gonna, I think, you're gonna, you gotta. I think you should come up with something more creative. I don't know what it is. Well, well here, do you have so to say? Like do you, is that one of the, you were saying? There's a bunch right? of rules. Is that one of the rules that you like have to say that? You know, what? I I don't exactly know yet because like, well, so that that's like the textbook like you hear and stuff, and I've taken like mission crap and they like say that, but um. Like, um, in like what, what I want to do. So I work at, I work a retail job and like, what I like to do is like, if someone like specifically for me, like I just find something common. Like if someone's wearing like a, like I, I'm a Packers fan. If someone's wearing a Packers shirt, I'll be like, can you believe what the Aaron Rodgers is leaving? Or can you believe you're like something like that? Or if they have like a cool tie, like, or I guess if they have like a fish on their tie, I'll be like, Oh, are you fisherman? Do you like fishing? Or like, or like if they're wearing like even if they're like wearing like a Nike shirt or like a bath. You're shirt, I'm gonna like, be honest oh, with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. You're Cooper. you're a little bit like those guys that like in Times Square, Venice Beach that hand out mixtapes to people. Or like yeah, like that or like a summer sales dude. I mean that's you're a little bit like that. Like if, can I tell you so I want can I tell you something and I hope I I hope Yeah. Here's what here's what I wanna tell you. Cause I want okay. I I think you should find happiness in whatever gives in whatever thing, but um yeah 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 you know Mormonism whether that's the the okay the vehicle that you choose to enact your grand desire of helping people mm-hmm. um I hope that even if that vehicle as you get older. Is, changes, yeah. Or, you know, I I, I, ho- I hope the vehicle remains flexible. But yeah, for the sure. but the grand idea it's through which thing. you're using this vehicle, I hope uh, stays consistent uh, throughout your entire life, so long as it um, keeps you happy. Do you know what I'm saying yeah, to you? Do you get? You yeah, know what absolutely. I'm Okay. Like, like you just find new ways. I think that there's a lot of people that probably need to hear that. Like, I think especially like, um, like missionaries that come home, like there's a lot of missionaries that come home and they just get so disenchanted with people and they just like, don't want anything to do with anybody because like literally like, I mean, there's all these rules. Like you have to be like, can I talk about Jesus Christ for like two years? You have to, and you have to, and I'm going to, I'm not, I'm actually, I hope me saying this to you is a compliment to your self awareness and not an insult, okay? Oh no! But you I know, don't take okay, but, okay, but you know that people hate people who come up to them to talk to them about Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for okay. sure. Like that's super annoying. But like, well, so there's like the thing where I mean, this is a different way. So like a lot of what it is like being a missionary. Like when you think of a missionary, you think about those guys that knock on your door and like are shoving the Book of Mormon in your face, right? Sure. But like. A lot of like what like that's what like people see it as because that's what you see up up front right but like a lot of what missionary being a missionary is is like just networking and working with connections and if someone like shows interest to like a member of the church like so if someone just goes up to a normal mormon and is asking them questions like actually interested in it then they'll send the missionaries and the missionaries are there so that they can answer those questions right Mm -hmm. so like there's like i don't know there's like lots of different ways to do it you know but yeah, for sure. Like, I know I totally like, even today, like, I feel like I'm walking past a bunch of people that are trying yeah. to like, because what I mean like, by that is like, when stuff. you look af- if if after two years of mm-hmm. trying to hand out pamphlets to people and talk to them about God, you come back and you're like, oh, uh, everyone hates me. And this people are, you know, you'll, yeah. you'll, you're, you'll have a certain, you'll, you'll have a certain kind of perspective. And I hope that you don't get too yeah. ingrained in that perspective. That not that it, I you might get in a point of that perspective where you're like yeah I'm gonna try a different way of uh, helping people 
but uh well i think you that, know keep keep trying yeah, well, to do your, your thing just that, be you know? flexible on uh you know how to do it yeah 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 yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just really excited and i don't know i think that like especially like i mean i just want people to be happy you know like i think this i mean like i guess there's that thing in my blessing i mean it's not just from that like i just feel naturally the person i, I wish everybody would feel that way I think a lot of, I think most people are good. And I think that most people do feel that way. Just like, like just spreading happiness and joy. Like, like, like why wouldn't you, you know, like if you, if you have the opportunity, so just like, um, just like being, that's just part of being a human. And so I think that like, for me, like I'm going to go out and be a missionary for two years. And I'm going to use this vehicle, like you said, but then I'm going to come back and I, I'm going to like, I mean like a big, like, I like, this is just like my actual example, like fishing. Like I love, like one thing that um, just excites me and I just love no, like more than anything else is like when I have someone else catch a fish, like I don't care like um, when I catch a fish, like it's like if I can help someone get to that goal and just see the like sparkle in their eyes when they do it, that just, that's just what makes me happy. And so I think that there's ways to find the sparkle in that eye in like so many different ways. And I think you just have to look for them, you know? And I think, dude, I think that this podcast and this whole thing, like, this, like, is totally just spreading positivity and happiness. I just love it. I've been oh, good. binging it. My my friend, shout out to Sanjay, showed me this podcast. Oh, and, cool. Um, I, I, just, I just love it. It's so good. And Thanks, I just think man. you spread happiness and love, man. And I think that, Thanks, I mean, that's man. your vehicle. Can... Everybody has a vehicle, you know? I'm glad you like the podcast. I came up with it as an idea to start a lucrative t-shirt business. You know what? I mean, God works mysterious ways, like I said, man. <laughs> um, dude, I gotta make it. Okay, see now I gotta make a now I gotta make a Gek works in mysterious ways T-shirt. Dude, um, do that and put, put like a missionary tag on him or something. Dude, what's your name again? F- F- Elder uh, Smith. Elder Smith. Clayton. Clay. K- Keaton. Creighton. Creighton. Yeah, you know, Creighton. you know, Creighton University. Have you heard of that? Creatine. Yeah, creatine that works too. People call me creation, like um, um, Hamilton or whatever. Well, well, creatine. Uh, it's good talking to you. Um, hey, it's good talking to you, Lyle. Stay good. Be stay safe out there. Uh, All right, I will. So if you, there might be uh, two years asking people in Michigan if they want to talk to you about Jesus. You might get stabbed at least once. You know what? You know what that happens. I had a friend, or my cousin just got back from Brazil, and he got robbed at knife point twice. So, man, I mean, Michigan's—I don't know. I haven't been there, so we'll see what happens. Nah, you'll be fine. I don't <laughs> think I don't think anything bad is ever going to happen to you. Well, thank you. I hope that's true. I hope I hope that nothing bad happens to me on my mission. Have a good night, man. Hey, you have a good night too, Lyle. See you, man. See you, dude. I like that guy. Um, he was he was cool. I it's I like talking to people about religion because I'm not I'm not particularly religious at all, and I don't think that's a uh, you know something to say to be cool or anything. Um, but I was I don't know I don't know I don't because I'm not I don't know if I were. If I were a genius, I would know all the secrets of how to be happy in life, but I don't. And I was kind of thinking, I was like, oh man, is this, is religion? I didn't want this guy to, okay. I'm going to say a coherent thought. I didn't want this guy at 18, having grown up in his church and really... You know, only knowing that, I'm not gonna say he only knows that. I don't want to assume that much about his life and be a douche, but I didn't want him to think that that was his only way of helping people, right? Because maybe, maybe the way that he helps people is he starts one of those bars where you can drink and throw axes at dartboards, and maybe that's the thing that gives that helps people maybe somebody meets their wife there and they have kids and it's beautiful maybe he helps people with his axe throwing 
bar and not through Jesus. But I, and th that's just I, that's just an example. Is I don't want him to think he only can help people through God. If that's his thing, if that's what works for him to help people, and he, that spreads a positive thing for him, then that's awesome. That's sick. But he, he could do it in infinite ways. Like starting a bar where you can also throw axes at dartboards and they give you tickets and you can use the tickets to buy the blue Tootsie Rolls that on the on the outside they kind of look like they're blue raspberry flavor but then you open them and they're vanilla and I used to buy huge bags of those and keep them around the house but I kind of I'm in my uh I'm in my healing from buying bags uh, fucking uh bulk candy in Amazon on Amazon era Talk about that in a song Taylor Swift Call from Tom Hey, hello. Hey, Lyle. What's up, man? Sorry, I, I was eat, I, I just got off work and I was eating a burger. So, um, yeah. well, I really uh, I appreciate I appreciate you apologizing for uh, getting off of work and eating a burger. I was waiting for you to apologize for that. Thank you. I, I appreciate your appreciation. Uh, what's going on, Tom? How can I get you today? Um, just hanging out. Uh. So I am 21. I, I turned 21 two weeks ago, the second, whatever that makes that. Yep. And I have been at this bar, like I've been working at this bar since I was like 15, 16. Uh, no idea what I wanted to do. And I always liked making food. So I decided I was going to go to culinary school. But... That was always kind of expensive, and I decided that I was going to join the Coast Guard so they would pay for culinary school to all of that. And, okay. uh, yeah, so I, uh, if all goes well, I should leave this time next month, but I don't know. If that's the right call. If all goes well with joining the Coast Guard? Yeah, like, you know, you know, like paperwork and drug tests. The, the drug test will be fine, but like paperwork and all that. Sorry, I burped. What do you, what about, what is it about this paperwork that you're, did you, are you worried that you spelled your name wrong or you used a, a, <clears throat> a, a wrong type of ink? No, no, it's like, um, it's like stupid stuff. Like they look at your medical records and stuff like, cause like when I was younger, like, like a, like a little lad in middle school, I didn't do nothing but play Xbox. So I had a vitamin D deficiency. Um, and so they're looking at that and now they want me to come through my records and prove that I'm not a basement dwelling gamer boy. Okay. Well, um, I, I mean, they used to run ads for the Coast Guard on G4 TV. You're, you know G4 TV? No. Oh, wait, you're 21. Wait, I mean, I'm oh, I'm 25. I don't think we're there. You know, G, you, you don't know G4, the fucking channel that had Attack of the Show, and on, it was like a channel for basement-dwelling gamer people? Is that the one that had the, like, the, like, the bot league like the fighting robots and stuff oh yes yes it did yeah i, I forget the name of that I show but exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah okay well anyway I, the point what i'm getting at is that it sounds the, the military i think wants those guys so i wouldn't worry about coming off like a basement dweller gamer boy to the military because i think that's what they want what i'm curious about is do you, so let's say this paperwork does go through they're like you what's your name again tom you tom look like a killing machine and we want to give you an rpg and plant you um at, at the at, on on the the the, the, the where, where do you live uh maryland well, we want to plant you in the chesapeake bay off the course of maryland to shoot an rpg javelin at any unfortunate enough uh Italian to invade our waters. We want that for you, Tom. Is that exciting life for you? That's what I want to know. Is that do you want 
to be in the Coast Guard? Do you want the paperwork to go through? What do you What do you want? Um. Yes, and also no. It, it it'd be cool if I went because. So I, I'm not going for like a for war or anything. I'm going for culinary because they they have a really nice like culinary course like it's it's like three or four months in california but that's after basic training so i'd still have to go yeah. through all the you know physical aspect of the training shooting javelins at boats makes you hungry it's but true. either way either way the, the the point being are you do you want to do this is it exciting for you i think so i think so i want to um it it'd be a way to like you know see new things and it it also be a lot of money for me and my girlfriend which i think is pretty cool now what's the contract like are you locked in for many years uh at minimum it's like 4 or 5 i think all right but i i could go for as long as i want like uh if if it ends up i really like it i could go for 15 20 and retire by the time i'm 3536. That ain't a bad gig. Right? Well, all right. So, uh maybe the, maybe there's not. Maybe you just wanted to call in to celebrate this, but uh is there any tension or or problems? Uh yeah, so they actually I uh, so what's today? Wednesday. So, Monday I had to drive to like about two hours to one of the uh, stations where you where you do all like the you know peeing in a cup and the blood drawn and the paperwork and the whatnots and uh, we drove down at three in the morning and had to hang out until four thirty and uh, I didn't get out until around twelve like in the afternoon. Because they basically said, between the vitamin D thing that I said earlier, and uh, since I have ADHD, but I haven't like taken any like Adderall or anything, even though I took it in middle school, they said, "Oh yeah, you're disqualified." Bye, dude. And so now we're waiting on paperwork for like a waiver, which is super easy to get. It's super common, but now I'm like a little stressed that they're gonna just wave me off and say bye do something else you know what i mean i feel like adderall you can make some fucking mean fettuccine alfredo on that drug <clears throat> i think they should test people to make sure that they are taking adderall yeah i mean that that's one way yeah i like i like where you're at gek yeah i mean i'm not in charge of the united states military but if i was i would make sure that everybody who signs up we make sure that they're on drugs because that would make a stronger army. I can't see how a drug. I think well, maybe not piece certain drugs, right? Like, right. PCP is probably not great because it might make you turn on. There might be some friendly fire in there. Um, right. MDM MDMA is an interesting one because maybe if all, I think if if every soldier was high on MDMA, it would kind of be like if. You know those fights where, like, you know, two two guys are in a fight and and one's getting held back. You know, you know how when you get in a fight, people try to hold you yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be like if one guy was being held back, but the other guy was just punching on him because because everyone in our military would be like, "Why are we even fighting, man?" And then you know, I don't know, North Korea would, <laughs> it'd be, it'd be would like sending the uh, it'd be like sending the Hulk in there. You just need one guy off MDMA. No, I think no, I think they I think MDMA would make them not want to fight. They would make them not want to fight. Uh, uh unless but if 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 some maybe if they had MDMA guns and they could shoot them at the enemy, that could work and we just shoot or just shoot them in the air so that everyone's, you know, uh rubbing up on each other. Acid would make Ooh. an okay soldier maybe. But but if 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 and I and if I think that the government's they want the soldiers to be uh, uh, wired killing machines right, like or, or not kill. even if their right. job isn't to kill if their job is to make pasta they want them to be wired so I think they should let soldiers at least be high on Adderall and cocaine but nothing else coke would probably be cool 
put a little bit in the pasta, you know, roll it up in a meatball or something. I'm glad that you're I here's but you know I think you're going to be fine. I don't think. And even if you don't you don't get this job, you can um you come cook for me, man. That doesn't sound like a bad idea, Gek. Um, it would what's, have what's to be. What's your favorite food? It would have to be for free. I wouldn't. I don't have any money to give you, but. Do you have an um, attic or a garage I could crash in? No, I live in a, a studio apartment. One bed. That sounds great, dude. No, it's not one bed. It's one room. Even better. If you can make me some pasta bolognese, you know, the pasta with meat sauce, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. That sounds cool. I could do that. Maybe some bison? Bison? Bison. Bison bolognese. Like like the, the animal bison? Yeah. You're a sick fuck, man. You're perfect for the military. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. I don't know anything about the fucking military. I don't want to be... People are going to be like, oh, Lyle's anti-military. I don't know anything about any, any stuff. I think being in the military sounds, uh, I don't know. I've talked to a lot of people who are in the military and a lot of people who left the military. And some people, it like changed their lives for the better. Other people changed their lives for the worse. But that's the beautiful, that's the beautiful thing about human life is we're all different. You know? It's true. Very good way to look at it. What's your name again? Tom. Tom. Tom, do you feel like this phone call was helpful for you in any way, shape, or form? Uh, I think you so. Can, okay. This is pretty cool. Okay. Uh, the truth is usually one bit down from what they tell you. So when you say, I think so, I interpret that as a no, which is fine. No, and no, if no. You, no and if you, you, and if you had said, if you had said, if you had said no, I would have interpreted it as this actively harmed me. <laughs> but anyway, Tom, is yeah, there um, yeah. anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, I, li- I listen a lot. To the- I actually, like I said, I was closing. Uh, I listen to your Spotify episodes a lot when I'm closing. And uh, it-, it was lucky I had just left as I saw you say, hey, let's take another call. Fuck yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, well, shout out Blue Beetle. That movie was cool. Blue Beetle. Oh, yeah. I see that on bus stops everywhere. Um. Well, good luck, man. I hope you. I hope you get the job. I hope you get to make some some mean uh, uh, meatball parmesan, meat spaghetti Thanks, and meatballs for the for the for the troops. God I bless you, Tom. That. Take care, man. God bless you, Jack. Take care. Yay, it's working. <laughs> hello? Yes, hello. How are you? I'm very good. You sent me a text. Your name is Amber? Yes. Amber, you sent me a text that I found very interesting. You you yes. said to me, you said to me, I am in two polyamorous relationships and I have yes. a 7-month-old child with one of them. And we all live in the same house. Yes, we do. Okay, how's how's the situation going? Um, the beginning was hard. Just having a newborn is hard, but um, it's doing really good. Both of my partners are male. They are. We we don't refer to the other one as dad. He's still figuring out like what he's comfortable with. But the one I had the baby with is dad, and they're both doing really great. Like, we all love our child so much. Even the guy... Wait, so... The boyfriend who's come, it's not. Does he... Is he, yeah. like, involved in the child's life? Yeah. So yeah, like he helps he, take care of the baby, feed him, you know, all that kind of stuff. He helps take care of the child. Yeah. D- and like he does he plan on being a part of the child's life for like indefinitely in the way that you would if you had a you know decided to be a dad for, with anyone else? I I do believe so. I and I always try to look at relationships like we don't know if we're going to hate each other 10 years from now. But 
for now, you know, the future is together. All right. I try not to read the chat while I'm on the phone, but I got to say this. Somebody in oh. the chat just said, <laughs> this man got uncle zoned, which is pretty funny. Oh, yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't want to call you uncle because that would be really weird. This man got uncle zoned. Um, All right. So, uh, man. Uh, I know that. um, How long have you been dating this, these guys for? Two years. Two years. No, wait. Two years each? It was in three years. Three years. Are they boyfriends? Do they do do stuff? Nope. Really? Which, if they if they wanted to, you know, I'm more than comfortable with that. But they're, um, one of my partners is heterosexual, so. Okay, so they're they're not they're they're just they're just homeboys. Are they are yeah. they even friends? They, they, are they or are they just guys? Oh yeah, just roommates. No, they're totally friends. Um, they love hanging out and we all have really similar interests so we we be vibing now why did yeah you've been dating them both for the same period of time um it was (laughs) funnily enough it happened in 2020 and uh in february of that year i met the first guy who was not the father and then um, later that year, in this uh, October, is when I really got to know the father of my child, um, and we all just really clicked really well. And it was like, yeah, these are the people that I want to be with. And I did try having a third relationship, but there is not enough time in the week. Uh, I, why? If the what? I- <laughs> You know, look, I'm all for people living whatever life they want to live, but I, I, what, in what way could a third relationship add to 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 your life in that situation? Yeah, if if I didn't have to have a job, I believe I could totally do it. I, I if just, you didn't have, it sounds like if you didn't have a job, yeah. you would you would have ten different boyfriends. Which you know what, <laughs> I wouldn't blame you for. That sounds nice. Um, I just okay. So um, I'm. I have a yeah. question. Why w- did you have kids with one and not the other? Like why? Why is this guy the dad and not the other guy? What was what, what um, went into that decision? So I had a conversation with both of them, and I was like, "I want a child. I am this age." And the child, and and when I'm this age, the kid's going to be this old. And, you know, I'm ready to have a kid right now, settle down, I have a house. Um, And I asked the first one I was with, do you want to have a kid? And he said, I'm not ready to have my own biological child right now. And I said, okay. And I asked the other one, you know, do you want to have a kid with me right now? And they said, yes, I would love to do that. I want a child. And... And we all discussed this beforehand, like, to the first one, like, are you going to be involved? And he says, not as much as the biological father, but he wants to be involved. I said, you know what? That's totally cool and understandable. Okay, so one of them was more ready than the other. One one really volunteered over the other. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, now, what would you have done if they both like? Would there have been a bidding war if they both wanted to? Like, you'd have them both <laughs> jizz in a cup and take it to a doctor and just be like, "Tell me which one of these is better, and we'll go with the science." <laughs> um, I never even thought of that. That's very funny. Um, I guess if that happened, if they were both like, "I want to have a kid," "I want to have a kid," I'll be like, "Okay." Let's try to plan this out. Um, you know, after I have the first child, we can try to start having another one soon. One of my partners is 
a couple years older than me, and the the father of my child is four years younger than me. So how how old are I, you? I am thirty two. Okay. Uh, what was I going to ask you? Oh my god, why am I going crazy about this? Uh, oh yes, now the boyfriend. Do the boyfriends have girlfriends? Um, my the father of my child is he's kind of like not interested right now and looking around um my first boyfriend he he goes out whenever he wants to and like goes on dates on tinder and stuff which is like every time he goes out on a date i get so excited i'm like oh this is fun um you have an you have a you have an interesting household situation to bring a girl back home to i'll say that yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, only it right now, I'm not looking for anyone else right now because of the baby. Like it's baby time right now. Okay. So, all right. So right now it's just you three. There's no, I mean, you guys could just keep accumulating for, I mean, shit, man, you guys could just keep accumulating folks and start a big cult and make the baby your leader. <laughs> we'll have to raise him a very very writer very smart and then i won't unless none of us will have to think he'll do all the thinking for us are you worried about exp- i mean I, I i guess that's a question are you worried about having to explain this situation to your baby but when i when i think about that i'm like where i guess i don't know where the worry comes in oh no um it's just like having uh same sex parents it's just like yeah sure i'm just uh i guess the worry for me is like if I do have another child with my other partner, like being able to afford it. So if like, you have a I child, would have to be, wait, if you have a child with your other uh, partner, that would just make the, what was the, be the kid's relationship to that kid? They'd be half brothers. Yeah. They'd be brothers. I, I have three half brothers myself. So were you, were your parents polyamorous? No, but when I told my mom, because I did come out to my mom about it, and she's like, you know, funny, funny, that funnily enough, your aunt and uncle are swingers. I, I thought that was so funny. Hmm. Um. Isn't this seems like uh? I don't know. Seems like it seems it seems like you're doing fine. Does everyone have a job? Yes. What do you guys do? Um Two of us are what I like to call factory rats. We we work in a ten hour <clears throat> ten hour a day, four days a week shift. Hi. Um and then, wait, is that, partner, is that is that is that one of the guys? Yeah. Let me talk to him. Oh, London, come here, please. Hello. Oh, he doesn't want to do it. Oh, no. He. Uh, the, oh, uh, the other one's asleep right now. Oh, the other one's asleep. Yeah. He did, has to go did, to work the, did the guy give a morning. reason why he doesn't want to uh, talk? He just doesn't want to be used for content, which I totally respect. Yeah, I respect that too. Like, uh, the people at work know that I'm Polly and he's my partner. Like, we're, all of our friends know, like, we're pretty, uh, what they call it, kitchen table polyamory, where we're just totally open about it. Uh, was that hard for any of your, like, but relationships just- or, or anything like that? Um, and this is this is the big thing is that I used to be married and I 
told my husband that I wanted to open up the marriage because this is the person that I am. I'm not okay with just having one relationship. And we were together for 12 years, not married for 12 years. But, um, and I moved out shortly after that happened so we could have some distance. And what I found is that if you start in a monogamous relationship and try to open it up afterwards, it usually doesn't end up working. Like if mm. you go into a relationship saying, I'm Polly, this is what's going on. It works out beautifully. You know, that makes and sense. Right? Husband, that makes sense. I, Cause I feel like people would, um, uh, you know, as, as you guys would get older, you know, it would, you would have your own independent gravitations towards and away from different things. And it'd be very hard for your gravitations yeah. to align. Also, we were uh, each other's first. So, like, we started dating in high school, and then we were together for 12 years, and we just kind of went in different directions at the same time. But he's my ex-husband now, but we're, like, still really good friends. We still talk all the time, and he he's also really cool with my partners, too. What if one of your partners wanted to start dating your ex-husband? Would that be sick or bad? I mean, I would find that surprising, but I'd be totally all right with that. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be like a, that, that, that would be the new, that's like the 2023 full house. <laughs> um, well, shit. Uh, I, I, is, is your, is your, are is the guy, what's his fucking name? Lemmy Lon, Lonin. Is he cool with being Let's used for content via, via you telling the story about him? That that should be fun. <laughs> I, I guess I like. We'll I guess I asked you for we'll, his permission, we'll just, but yeah, anyway, we'll just call him Lemmy. Anyway, um, the, what's your name again? Tyler. Amber. Um, is is everything okay in this situation? Are you happy? Are you feeling decent about uh, waking up every day and looking at the sun? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm I'm the happiest I've ever been. Damn. See, I don't know. That's the thing. You can you can uh, shit and piss all over um, different ways of living, but uh, you can't argue with somebody's happiness. And I don't know what that means necessarily. <laughs> Maybe you can argue with. I guess if somebody really enjoyed killing people and it made them really happy. You could probably argue with their happiness, but I, you're not killing anybody. So I think that's a different thing. No. Um, Amber, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? What I'd like to say, what the, the couple times that I heard polyamorous people talk on the chat, or not the chat, but the thing is, on there the, are definitely the non, yeah, there are definitely non-ethical ways to do polyamory in the last couple times. I've heard um, people talk about it. It it doesn't seem like they were doing it very ethically, and they were trying to like put all of their bad things onto one partner and not like respecting that partner. Like, you, Are you talking you about that? Yeah, sure. there was. A, I made there was a little clip from a call. Yeah. Where there was some, I forget what she said in that clip, but there was somebody talking about being in a polyamory relationship and having one partner that they like have fun with and one that they like take their emotional issues to, something like that. Right. That's not ethical. Like, that's not cool to do. You have to, you have to be positive and be there when your partners need you. Just like in a, a normal relationship, you're a team. You gotta, you gotta treat your relationship like you're a team. Well, you know what? Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I have anything else to say about polyamory. I've thought about it. I'm not gonna sit here and say I haven't thought about it. But <laughs> um, you know, gotta get one relationship first before you add a second one. Right. Uh, thank you for calling, Amber. You have a wonderful rest of the night. You too. 
I'm actually already in a relationship with God. I pay him $20 a month and he lets me have a dumbass existence where I get to talk to people on the phone as a gecko. Good trade. <laughs>